What's up, witches? Welcome to my channel. I'm Luna, and I am here for a tarot unboxing today. And it's, I hope your day is going better than mine, because um, we've had an unexpected blow to the budget with a dead battery and a missed appointment and all kinds of villainous things, which actually makes it the perfect day for unboxing the Disney Villains Tarot deck. Hell yeah, why not? I feel like that. Oh, no, no. Oh, for God's sake. There we go. <laughs> I feel like there's a Disney villain in control of my life right now, so let's go there. This is a gift from my friend Tavia. Thank you so much. Um, she picked it off my wish list, my Amazon wish list, and you can do the same thing. Um, by clicking the link down below, picking a deck off of that list and sending it to me with your particular question if you have one and I will read for you on the unboxing video. But here we go with the Disney Villains Tarot deck and guidebook. We've got the, um, the matte and glossy combo that I love so much and there are some of our favorites. Jafar, Ursula, Scar, um, Maleficent, <clears throat> the evil queen from uh, Snow White and I don't know this dude. Uh oh. I have holes in my Disney villain knowledge. This is illustrated by Ellie Goldwine. Nice sturdy box. This is um, an Insight Editions deck and I have the um, Nightmare Before Christmas and the Labyrinth decks, both of which are inside editions, they tend to do um, fan-based decks. So um, popular movies, popular fan bases, uh, inside editions will do a deck for them. I think they're handling the Buffy deck that's coming out next year. Um, and I, what I'm expecting from that is um, that they will be pip cards, but we will see includes a fully illustrated 78 card deck and 128 page guidebook. Seize your destiny with this official tarot deck based on Disney's most dastardly villains, featuring original art of Maleficent, Ursula, Captain Hook, and other notorious ne'er-do-wells from popular Disney films throughout the years. Um, this copyright is 2021. This is definitely a collection deck. So there are decks that I'm really interested in in terms of reading, and then there are ones that are for the collection and my legacy to my children, and this is one of those collection decks. I do love the box. I love the green, and you know, the green and purple, um, the green being that classic Disney evil poison color. Like, look around Ursula, and look around Scar, and whenever there's something um, poisony going on in Disney movies, you'll usually see that acid green color, I guess is how I would say it. The backs, as you can see, are purple with a pattern. Uh, there's the book, and uh, this guy, again, I don't know this guy on the back of the book. <coughs> I have in the front of the book, taped, and I haven't looked through the deck, I just opened it and deplasticked it and put, um, I've got to fix that. But I, when you send me a gift and there's a little gift note with your name on it, I will tape that to the inside of the book so that every time I use this deck, I'm thinking of you. Written by Minerva Siegel, I'm happy that she's named Minerva, illustrated by Ellie Goldwine. So we have a short introduction, Magic Mirror on the Wall. Who is the fairest one of all? That's the Queen from Snow White. Um, all right, let's just read the introduction here. Seeking answers to some of life's toughest questions? Look no further. The Queen, Maleficent, Scar, and all their most dastardly friends and allies have the answers, at least for those brave enough to ask for guidance from a bunch of outright villains. Starring the most famous and and beloved antagonists from Disney's iconic animated films, this deck presents the sinister, calculating, misunderstood,
characters on their own terms. The result is a truly twisted take on a classic tarot deck. Um, while many assume tarot is all about predicting the future, its uses actually go far beyond fortune telling. Tarot can be used as a powerful tool for self-exploration and can serve as a valuable guide to help you along life's journeys. In the Disney Villains Tarot Deck and Guidebook, you'll find inspiration with creative Madame Mim, conjure visions of the future with notorious sorcerer Dr. Facilier, that's probably who that guy is, and make time for a bit of self-reflection with the help of the Queen's Magic Mirror. Are you ready to sail your inner high seas with Captain Hook, manifest momentum with tenacious Cruella de Vil, make your dreams come true with a little help from Ursula the Sea Witch? It's time to dive into the mysterious world of Tarot. Adventure awaits, but don't forget these villains may be complicated, but they are not known for their gentle hearts. The truth might hurt, but it will be the truth you need. All we can say is be prepared. Now I'm excited. <laughs> and then if we go to the back, we have um, a section called Tarot Readings, and it talks about caring for your deck, preparing to read Tarot. The Poison Apple Tarot Spread, which is a four card. The Diamond in the Rough Tarot Spread. I hear Jafar's voice in my head. That's a three card. And Ursula's Cauldron Tarot Spread, which is a five card. Then about the author and about the illustrator. Um, Minerva Siegel is also the author of the Nightmare Before Christmas deck and guidebook, the Supernatural Tarot deck and guidebook, and Tarot for Self-Care, How to Use Tarot to Manifest Your Best Self. Okay, she uh, is Spooky Fat Babe on Instagram. The illustrator Ellie Goldwine is an illustrator, embroiderer, tinkerer, and full-time mommy to two magical pixies. She was born in the USSR and raised in Russia, and she currently lives in the heart of the Cotswolds in the UK. She's fond of extremely long walks, classic literature, history, and the macabre, mostly crepuscular, crepuscular? I don't know what that means. You can and probably should find her at Ellie Goldwine. All right. Setting those aside, zooming in. <clears throat> now, I do apologize because I have had to downgrade the resolution of my videos when I'm shooting because of my miserable upload speeds despite my efforts. <laughs> so, here we go. Hopefully they won't be too bad. Here's the fool, and I don't know this guy. I think this is from, um, well, I'm going to keep the book handy so I can name these people. Understanding your deck. The fool. Isma. So, um, solidly build, no, Kronk. Okay, Kronk, but I don't know the movie. I'm sorry. But he's the fool. And he's got like a little an angel and a devil over his shoulders. Come on now. I didn't downgrade it that much, y'all. <sighs> Take it up. Bring it back. Pop it in. Give it up. <laughs> Here's the magician and another guy I don't know. Um, this is, yes, Dr. Facilier. I wish that they referenced the movies, but they don't. So here's the mis magician. Obviously, he's got the sleight of hand going on for him. We have Maleficent as the high priestess. And just for shits and grins, let's look. The High Priestess is a secretive, intuitive figure whose power comes from deep within her own subconscious. Like Maleficent, she's sophisticated, calculating, and a magical force to be reckoned with. I love the writing. The High Priestess Tarot card is a call to look deeper. You may not be seeing a situation, friendship, or relationship in your life for what it really is. What is your intuition telling you? Take inspiration from Mysterious Maleficent and embrace solitude to ruminate on this predicament. Consider it carefully, for there is more going on than meets the eye. And there is an upright and a reverse. That was the upright. So let's just keep going. The Empress. I don't know her either. Oh my God. See, this, this is a function of how old my kids are. Mother Gothel. Um, in Rapunzel, I guess. Oh, yes, I see the hair. Then we have the Emperor. 
who is Shere Khan. And we have a drink of water. All right. I don't know this person either. Oh my God. <clears throat> Dawn Bellwether, Zootopia. <clears throat> oh, Vanessa. So this is Ursula. Here's from um, The Little Mermaid. Ursula, when she transforms herself into human form as Vanessa. Here's Cruella with that huge car. Here are the alligators from Rescuers, maybe? Cruella is the chariot. This is strength. Brutus and Nero are Madame Medusa's enormous crocodile sidekicks. Orphan Penny. Yes, this is from the Rescuers. Rescuers or Rescuers Down Under? I can't remember which, but they're crocodiles, so it must be Down Under. <clears throat> the Hermit is Michael Goob Yagubian. All right. No idea. <laughs> Do they? Yeah, they don't uh, reference. The Wheel of Fortune is the spinning wheel from Sleeping Beauty with Maleficent's shadow in the back. That's awesome. Justice is Dr. Callaghan or Callahan. Masked yokai. Right. The hanged man is. I can't remember his name. Ka. Ka. From Jungle Book. Death. Oh, of course. Hades. It's perfect. And these are Ursula's little eels. Do they have names? They are Flotsam and Jetsam, that's right. Ooh, this is the guy from Fantasia, I think, um, Bald Mountain. Yep, Night on Bald Mountain. The powerful, mysterious Chernabog. Who knew he had a name? <clears throat> this is the tower from Rapunzel. Ooh, ooh. The cardstock is thick and matte, so I'm not looking forward to shuffling them. <laughs> the star is the, the uh, mask, or the magic mirror from Snow White. Her, I don't know. She is um, Yzma. Okay, so this is Yzma, the advisor to Emperor Kutsko. It's... Yeah, I, the, the name is on the tip of my tongue of the movie, but I don't know. El Dorado? Is that it? That's the city, anyway. The sun is Tamatoa. So I believe he's from that same movie. <coughs> and we have the Red Queen from Alice in Wonderland as the judgment card. Then we have a person I don't know is the world. This is... Horned King is finally able to summon the Cauldron Born. So I have no idea what this is from. But that's the world. Then we have King of Wands. All right, so we're starting with the court. Sorry, hold on. Ugh. <laughs> I always sit with my foot up under me, but my chair is leather and then... I can't get my leg out. <laughs> okay. So here's Jafar as the King of Wands. Maleficent as the Queen. No, no. This, the Queen from Snow White as the Queen of Wands with her poison apple. The Knight of Wands is the... Um, I turned right to it. That's amazing. Okay, this is Madame Mim. She, this is from um, The Sword and the Stone. Right? Yes. The Page of Wands is Iago with the lamp. Up, oh, and then we go to the Aces. So we do the courts in reverse, reverse order, then we go to the suits from the beginning. The Ace of Wands is Jafar's staff. 
the two of wands. <clears throat> Let's see if they reference the markets of Agrabah. So we are showing crossed wands here and there's not a specific reference. Whether you decide to take on a master wizard in a duel, explore the markets of Agrabah, or make a bargain with the sea witch. So they're referencing several magical movies. And yes, we have pipish cards. So though we see people holding the wands, we don't see anything else that comes from the traditional tarot. Certainly not an echo of the standard imagery. The three of wands, we have a big bubbling green cauldron. So it seems that, oh, and then we have a specific reference. Here's Jafar again with the four of wands. There's the poison apple. That's got to be Madame Mim for the sixth. And they do not, it seems that in um, the minors, absent of the courts, uh, we do not reference any specific thing, even when it is specifically identifiable. We have the seven. There's the Snow White Queen again. And, you know, you can see <coughs> the seven of wands, which talks about standing your ground, taking a firm stand against something. Um, and we've got this path leading to Snow White's or the Dwarf's Cottage, and then we've got the Queen in the background. So you, do you get the idea of standing against kind of? The Eight of Wands flying through the air. Here's Snow White Queen again for the Nine. And then that queen turned into a witch for the ten. This is the first one that has traditional imagery in it in the minors. And now we have the coins. So there's Prince John from Sword in the Stone. Oh, I think it's Prince John. Do we say in the courts? The king of coins. Yes, he's Prince John. No, it's Robin Hood. Prince John is Robin Hood. They don't say that here, but I ju I've just remembered. And then we have Madame Medusa. So again, I think she is rescuers. Um, and they do name her. And in the reverse, they make more reference, just as Madame Medusa's obsession with the Devil's Eye Diamond leads her to lose her closest allies, the Queen of Coins, blah, 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 and it goes on. So we do have specific references to the character in their story. There's the knight. Oh, that's the one from, from the Aristocats, right? No. Oh, yes, Edgar. Edgar Balthazar. I never knew his last name, but Edgar's the one that steals the kittens. <clears throat> then we have, ooh, the three hyenas, Shenzi, something, and Ed. Oh, they don't give their names. Damn. Blah, blah, Shenzi, and Ed. <laughs> All right, and there's Prince John for the Ace of Coins, his paw. We have, uh, do they name him? They don't, but I do think he is also from Robin Hood, maybe? They've got the three hyenas again. They don't name them there either. The four of coins, just a stuffed treasure chest. Um, the five of coins, so this looks like a lion king. Yeah, there's Pride Rock but it's all bones and wasteland for the Five of Pentacles. That makes sense. The Six of Coins shows the buttons on a wealthy man's vest. That makes sense as well. Then we've got Scar and the Hyenas with that green again <clears throat> for the Seven of Coins. Interesting. Seven of Coins usually talks about, you know, a review. It shows harvest and a review of things, but here we, we see, you know, somebody dominating and, and subservience. 
You have a long path ahead of you and are working hard to set yourself up for success. Seven of Coins is, advises you to make decisions with the long term in mind. Careful planning now will lead to big rewards in the future. So it does talk about planning. I guess I can get that from context. Here we have the Eight of Coins with the Hyenas again. The Nine of Coins looks like uh, down the front of Prince John's robe. And then the Ten is big castle stuff. All right. King of Swords, Scar. Remember once my like w one and something year old child because uh, Lion King in the theater was the first movie I ever took Morgana to and it was just before she turned one <laughs> and so she grew up you know literally cut her teeth on this movie and I remember her coming up to me once and saying Scar no food no water and I'm like what <laughs> Scar no food no water okay This is Lady Tremaine from Cinderella. That's it. <laughs> Cinderella, the evil stepmother, is the queen of swords. The knight of swords is someone I didn't knew. Percival McLeach. Rare Golden Eagle Marahuti. I don't know what movie this is. And then we have um, <clears throat> the cat. I think this is Lucifer. I think this is uh, Cinderella as well. Now we have the Ace of Swords. Just a sword with the poison green behind it. Two of Swords, just crossed swords. The three, again, that's as close as we're getting to traditional imagery. Scar again for the four. Lucifer for the five. Lady Tremaine, yes, with Lucifer for the six. <clears throat> the seven is uh, Cinderella's glass slipper <clears throat> in the proclamation. Hmm. Ah, and so the thief card. They're trying to steal the prince away from her. And then we have the eight which is Scar, again, as the hyenas are coming after him. Um, as a, being in a trap of your own making. Okay, that tracks. Now, it, I'm kind of... <clears throat> pardon me. Kind of bummed that they sort of go back and forth between different movies, but I guess it's, you kind of have to. You can't pick just four, you know, villain arcs to do this deck. There are so many Disney villains. Here's the Nine of Swords. And that's all, just a gang. And same with the 10. The 9 is kind of in midair. The 10 is into the ground. So, you know, if I think I understand this choice. Since it's Disney villains, um, it might be something that if somebody's got a you know, young teen that's uh, crazy about Disney and, oh, wouldn't this be fun to get them these? We're not going to show someone lying on the ground, you know, with ten swords in their back. So, I do get that. Then the cups, we have uh, Captain Hook. Ursula is the Queen of Cups. Of course. That's perfect. The knight is Gaston. And the page is, what's his name? Is it Smee? Is it Smee? Let's see if they say. Yes, Mr. Smee from Peter Pan. Here's the Ace of Cups with a heart coming out of it. The two, the three. Captain Hook is the four. Um, the five, they're showing all spilled cups awash in the sea. Then we have the six. The seven with octopus tentacles. 
the 8, I don't really know what that is. Does anybody know? Is that a hat and a feather in it? Don't know. The Nine of Cups. Look at Ursula in her gargantuan, bloated glory. And then the Ten of Cups is the ship. Peter Pan's ship. All right. Let's light up a charcoal and zoom you back out. All righty. Let's do, I've got a little bit of unburnt sage in here. So we'll do a quick blessing. It is a deck nonetheless. And, you know, when you have decks like this, remember that any tool can be um, a legitimate tool of divination. It depends on your approach. Right? And when you consider that... Um, the original minor arcana were just playing cards. Um, when you have meanings on board, so if you have a basic knowledge of um, the meanings of the standard tarot, you will be able to translate that to any pit deck. So what I've done is bless with air and fire and then bless with water and salt. The ocean water and the sound of the bell represents spirit. And then we say welcome to my guides and guardians, allies and ancestors. Thank you for being here for me. Thank you for the things you whisper in my ear. So um, yesterday I decided to try Wordle for the first time. And the fuss seems to have died down. I thought, you know, what the hell. Pulled it up and thought... What word should I start with? Smear. We'll just put smear in. I typed it in. Green, 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 green. I lolled. Today it took me four tries. And I won't tell you what the word is. Okay. So I offer fresh water in the fire of Azrael. And let's take a first shuffle. Pray for me. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Very nice. Very nice. I do not remember what it was like to shuffle um, my other Inside Editions decks, but this is very nice. I'm going to do it several times. Bridging isn't so great, but, but it is a rather thick deck. So, you know, this shows that you can have um, a heftier card stock that is still bendable, you know? It doesn't have to be, and I know that there are particular publishers that are notorious for their too heavy cardstock, and um, Hay House is one of them. Just do this, okay. Now let's decide which reading we're gonna do. I've got the number five in my head, so I think I'm going for the five card. Um, that's Ursula's Cauldron. <clears throat> people flock to Ursula's cauldron asking for her help making their dreams come true this tarot spread is designed to show you how you can skip the trip to the sea witch's grotto and create your own happily ever after okay so we have number one is the dilemma the present nature of your situation then there's the wish then there's the obstacle then there's the magic potion how to overcome the challenge and then the transformation reveals how achieving the goal represented by card two will affect you. And let's see. Diamond in the rough, there's in the rough is your present state, the polish, where you need to focus your attention. And the diamond represents how you'll be transformed. And then we have the poisoned apple. The fairest one of all is the goal. Snow white is the obstacle or challenge blocking you from reaching your goal. The poisoned apple, advice on how to overcome the obstacle presented by number two. And then the magic mirror is the likely outcome. <clears throat> I'm thinking I'm going to go with the poisoned apple. But you know what? My, my brain told me five. My guides told me five. Stop second guessing, Luna. Okay. So, 
Ursula's Cauldron Spread. I'm going to cut and pick. I shuffled Shirley my... I have been garbling words like crazy. I've shuffled semi-thoroughly. But they don't cut shuffle very well because the mat, they're matte. You know, they bend well, but because they're matte, do you see they just come in chunks? It's hard to get them to fan. So, oh, oh, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's just start here then. Oh, and it came out upside down. Goody. Let's see how we go. And then I will pull two more once I get these three down. The dilemma. This card represents the present nature of your situation. And usually, you know, the uh, question that I ask is how can we go from merely surviving into thriving? So the number one card comes down here and it's the Four of Swords. So the nature of our situation is... You've fought a hard battle and now it's time for some much needed rest and relaxation. You need to recharge, what, put up your feet and pamper yourself. You need to recharge in order to prepare for the adventures ahead. So our current situation is we need a break. We need a rest. We need self-care. Then number two is the wish and that goes up here. Let me move my still there. The wish is the Ace of Cups. This represents our goal. And it makes just perfect sense so far, right? Ace of Cups represents new friendships and love interests. Someone special will be entering the picture soon. Whether this person ends up being your true lover or a great new friend, trust that things are unfolding just as they should. Enjoy the moment and go with the flow. Now, this is much more specific than a standard meaning in saying that this is a new actual relationship, person showing up, romantic or friend. So the goal here, I'm going to go more broadly with what I know about the Ace of Cups. The goal here is to be refreshed, is to have that feeling of washed clean, of an emotional reset, of starting over again. Um, again, that, that idea of freshness, of your cup being full rather than empty. So we're in the need of rest and we're hoping that we can get to that place of feeling joy again. Ace of Cups represents joy and feeling like our cup is full. Now we have the obstacle. This tarot card represents the main challenge you'll face while trying to achieve your goal. And she came up out reversed and it's the Hierophant. So our challenge. Um, the miners only have an upright and a reversed description, no other text. The majors have a description and then the upright and then the reverse. So I'll read the description. Structure, law and order, and community are the main themes of the Hierophant Tarot card. Dawn Bellwether both represents and exploits these themes as an ambitious sheep who moves up Zootopia's government hierarchy to promote her own agenda. All right, reversed. Assister, Assistant Mayor Dawn Bellwether is a free thinker. God, I cannot speak is a free thinker who seeks to turn the predator-prey hierarchy of Zootopia on its head. The Hierophant, when reversed, encourages you to get inspired by Don Bellwether's revolutionary spirit by questioning the status quo. This is the time to think for yourself, boldly follow your heart, and blaze your own trail. <coughs> That's weird. It doesn't feel like a reverse but I guess yes reverse hierophant because hierophant is law and order following tried and true honoring tradition all this stuff um, and so the opposite is the rebellious revolutionary kind of spirit so our challenge here let's see <clears throat> questioning the status quo think for yourself. So I guess our challenge here is to 
go against the status quo that is keeping us feeling like we're tapped out, like we really need, you know, deep rest and self-care. So what are the things in your life? What are the stressors? What are the things that you have not been questioning? I have to go to work every day. I have to do this. I, where are you saying, I don't have a choice? I just don't have a choice. This is saying that we are challenged to go against that status quo. We are challenged to be free thinkers and to reimagine. So that is our obstacle and our challenge. How willing are we to think outside the box right now? Okay, number four is the magic potion. Let me pick two more. Let's see if they will oblige first. All right, let's just pick the magic potion. <clears throat> okay. Oh, good. We got a court and another major. That's handy. So the Knight of Coins is our court that represents the magic potion. This tarot card gives advice on how to overcome the challenge. So how do we get out of our same old, same old thinking and into a new frame of mind that can help us change our reality? The Knight of Coins is everything Butler Edgar Balthazar seems to be, responsible, dedicated, and loyal. That is until Balthazar finds out he won't be inheriting his employer's millions. This tarot card advises you to be patient, plan for the future, work hard, and operate with integrity. Okay, so how do we overcome? Um, through patience, through having a good plan, through working hard and operating with integrity. But this is as far as we ourselves are concerned. So not um, really reimagining the word integrity to be um, how I treat myself. Do I accord myself the same care and consideration and loyalty and responsibility as I give to others. So the magic potion is we've got to show ourselves that same responsibility, that same loyalty, and um, behave in integrity with what we say we believe about how to treat other people. We need to treat ourselves that way. And then the last one, wait, wait, wait. Is the transformation. This tarot card reveals how achieving the goal represent. I love the way they call them the tarot cards every time. Um, the goal represented by card two will affect you. So how achieving this joy and happiness, this emotional reset will affect us. It represents the lesson you'll learn along the way and how this process will help you grow. And we have the wheel of fortune. So I just heard a change is as good as a rest. Just as Maleficent's cursed spinning wheel changes the course of Aurora's life, the Wheel of Fortune represents pivotal moments, sudden changes in luck, and a twist of fate. The Wheel of Fortune is a reminder that life is unpredictable and your luck is ever-changing. When this tarot card is drawn, it's a clear sign to expect the unexpected. Appreciate where you are in life right now because big changes are on the way. Whether you're offered an amazing new opportunity or you prick your finger on a cursed spinning wheel, the Wheel of Fortune reminds you that your life can change in an instant. Live in the moment. So, how is it going to affect us? I mean, this is telling me that we don't expect to feel joyful. We expect to kind of just be nose to the grindstone grinding away into this, you know, interminable future. So, how will this affect us? it will feel like a sudden change of fortune. And that to me speaks to the fact that we have been under so much stress globally on every level for so long, for so many years now, up close and personal. And <clears throat> we continue to have new things unfolding, um, the tensions with China, um, the continuation of the Ukraine invasion, 
um, monkeypox. Now polio is coming back. We have all of these things every day that are just coming and coming and coming. So we don't expect to feel joy. We don't expect to feel this fresh um, this fresh new appreciation of our own lives and and you know the wheel of fortune to me also always talks about organic change there are so many cards of change in the major arcana interestingly the hierophant is a card that talks about things not changing same old same old not changing but the wheel of fortune says that the wheel turns even without our effort times change whether we um, initiate that change or not so this is organic seasonal change it says this too shall pass so ultimately um, time will move on and will change things as they are but if we take the rest and the responsibility if we take responsibility for ourselves and really do change our status quo so Hierophant upside down is also change it up, get out of your rut. How do you get out of your rut? Um, look at the reading for Tarot de Carlotides, which I posted like a week ago. Um, the question there specifically was how do we get out of our rut? There's a lot of advice there. I'll give the same advice here. Um, if you feel yourself really, really stuck in a rut, and so the challenge is how do I change this? Same old, same old routine. Um, <clears throat> if you find yourself completely immobilized, I find pick a small area and clean it. Make it an area that is personal to you. Make it an area that you will um, interact with intimately like first thing in the morning or at least during the course of your day at least once. Um, so the place where you get ready in the morning, the place where you put makeup on, um, your nightstand where you snuggle in at night to relax. Just something that when you look at it, you know, that's easy to do, easy to measure, quick, you know, quick bang for your buck, a feeling like you've accomplished something sometimes that is enough to bust the stall and sometimes when you're cleaning a thing like that and you ha take something and you go to put it away it takes you to another area and it's like if I just spend five minutes I can get this area organized and and you know aligned <laughs> as well I also want to say I did not say this on the other reading but when you do little projects and cleaning like that you can make it work on um, all the levels. If you bring the awareness to it, and while you are bringing order to a particular area, you can say, I am initiating this order to flow through all of my life. If you're taking a cloth and you're wiping things off, I clear away all the dust and all the grime that is gumming up the works. Clearing away, this clears my energy field and, and clears my energy overall to move forward. So you can work your magic on a very easy, easily achievable mundane level. And that helps things to move forward and bring you to this reset. Because this Wheel of Fortune, as I read their meaning, says we don't, we're not expecting a reset. But if we... Uh, if our challenge is to upset the status quo and the status quo is the doldrums um, then yes we need to catalyze initiate that change take responsibility for our own self-care and we will really get the reset that we're looking for but even so we can just sort of wait for it and time will move on and change better not to wait for it better to take the responsibility of the night and uh, get your horse moving <laughs> okay well, um, Tavia, you didn't give me a question, but that was also personally keyed to you. So let me know what you think. You guys give me your comments down below. Does somebody else have this deck that you'd like to give me your experience with it? I am so, so down for an engagement and engaged conversation in the comments. I am struggling so hard to string words together, you guys. It's like I'm tripping over my tongue every second. Oh, well. 
If you liked this, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed, consider doing that. Please, I'd love to have you aboard. Um, I do unboxings and I do live stream readings and um, always have ideas running around in my head. But you know what? I'm subject to those doldrums as well. So I hope you got something out of this. If not, I hope you just enjoyed it and enjoyed taking a little break. Um, take good care of yourselves, will you? I will see you next time around. And until then, this is Luna. Blessed be.